My friends, I welcome you here to St. George Church as we pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Rome, a great woman and a great saint. We ask that God will bless us that we may follow in her example of service, especially to the sick and poor. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who has given us in St. Francis of Rome a singular model of both married and monastic life, Grant us perseverance in your service, that in every circumstance of life we may see and follow you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh announced and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh, by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast nor cattle nor sheep shall taste anything they shall not eat, they shall not drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn away from his evil and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold this bl his blaming wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A clean heart grave for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. May, our word, may God's word dwell in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. 
While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. There is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the people of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we celebrate one of my favorite saints, St. Francis of Rome. He was born in 1384. Uh, to a fairly wealthy family, and of course, in those times uh, in, the, in Rome, uh, wealthy families married into wealthy families. And in spite of the fact that she wanted to become a nun, her father said, your marriage is already set, and so it's going to happen. The promises have been made between our families. So at age 13, she was married. And it was a, it was a happy marriage. They were, they were good to each other. They, her husband, uh, cared for her well. They had three children, but throughout uh, her marriage, she was very, very concerned uh, for the poor and for the sick. You gotta remember, at this time, there was no Italy. Uh, the the uh, peninsula uh, uh, that we call Italy was just a bunch of small little kingdoms. You know, Florence was its own, Rome was its own, Naples was its own. So they had all these little kingdoms, and of course, they're always fighting. And so uh, in the course of the, these wars, of course, a lot of disease and famine would develop, and so there were tremendous issues in Rome, terrible, terrible uh, illnesses going around, and uh, Francis and her sister uh, devoted themselves to caring for the poor and for the sick, even bringing them into their own palace so that they would be able to have a decent place to be. Francis would go out to people uh, in hospitals or in homes, take their laundry, wash them. They said that um, even as unnerving and as kind of disgusting their wounds might be that they were developing, it was there that she gave even more loving devotion to that person because she recognized their need for that kind of care, for someone to show some kind of tenderness. She would live to be 54 years old. She herself would uh, give in then to the um, famine that was uh, routing uh, Rome at that time. She was recognized for at least 60 healings in her lifetime. And ever since then, uh, Francis of Rome has been a great inspiration to women. Uh, even a after her marriage, she, be she formed a, a religious community uh, in, in which they would serve the poor and the sick in particular. It was a beautiful and wondrous uh, kind of example that she gave to offer herself as a wealthy woman, to offer herself to the poor, as a healthy woman to offer herself to the sick, as a person who was deeply devoted to God to allow God to shine through her life. That's a perfect example for us, I think. I think that all of us in some small way or another, maybe in larger ways, can follow her example in caring for those, especially for the folks who are taking care of people at home. And it's not an easy thing to do. And so today, in a particular way, let's pray for not only the sick, but also for those who care for them. We offer our prayers and petitions. that God will bless us, that we may follow the example of the great saints. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that we may turn away from sin this Lent and be faithful to the gospel. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that our acts of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving may be a sign and a symbol to ourselves and to others of our devotion to God and our willingness to give of ourselves to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who care for the sick, for doctors and nurses and all medical professionals, and for those who care for loved ones at home. 
who watch over them and who bless them with their kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick at homes or in hospitals, and we pray for those who have died, that they may rejoice with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intentions today, for Eva Gonzalez and the intentions of William Nelson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness and grace, we give you thanks and praise for the people who have shown us care throughout our lives. Bless us, Lord, so that we can pay it forward to others who are in need of our care today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Francis of Rome be acceptable to you, O Lord, and grant that release from earthly attachments we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis of Rome, St. George, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and in a particular way, bless those who are trying to make peace in the Ukraine, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to her their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer one another a sign of Christ's love and peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite the folks at home to take a moment now to make an act of spiritual communion. And in a particular way, I say to them, you know, especially those who are sick or taking care of someone who is sick, that you are always in our prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
We pray that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn through the example of St. Francis of Rome to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of your Son. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, this Mass has ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a lovely day, everyone.